Hi, it's Dr. Nick with the ECG Academy, and this week's Chalk Talk is a rhythm strip that I got off the telemetry unit. I thought it was really interesting. Now, these are two leads being recorded simultaneously, lead one, it looks like, and lead three. And when you glance at the whole thing, when you look across the whole rhythm strip, you can see that it is irregular. You've got a somewhat slow rhythm on the left side and also on the right side, and then you've got this little run of a QRS that's a, quite a bit faster. Let's figure out exactly what the rates are. It's going to be less than 50 down here around 45 beats per minute. And then what's the rate over here? And count off as 300, 150, 175. So it's around 80 something. Or It looks like we can see P waves in front of these beats here, although the P waves in front of these beats are quite a bit smaller and harder to see. And when you look at the QRS complex, it's kind of wide. This one starts on a heavy line and you can actually see that it extends more than three boxes across, it's probably close to four boxes. So you'd have to call this about 150 milliseconds. And the interesting thing, those of you who are comfortable reading 12 leads, lead one looks like a normal R wave and then a very deep S wave. So it looks like a right bundle branch block, doesn't it? That's kind of what it looks like. So from this top strip, it's kind of hard to say what's going on. It could be marked sinus bradycardia and then maybe a three beat run of some other kind of rhythm but don't forget you have a second rhythm strip. So you always have to keep in mind that these two strips are running simultaneously. So what does this rhythm strip show? Here, the P waves are just absolutely enormous. And you can see a huge P wave in front of this QRS as well. And then you can see a P wave here and, and here, and they all kind of look the same, don't they? But what you should notice if you've had enough cups of coffee this morning is that the P2P interval appears to continue with a beat here, and then it's here, and then it's here. It appears that you have P waves that are not conducting. It looks like some of the P waves are conducting and some are not. So it turns out that this is not a run of atrial tachycardia. This is the underlying sinus rhythm with one-to-one -one conduction. And what we have out here is a period of two-to-one AV block. Now let's get a better idea of where the level of the block is because ultimately that's most important. Because when you talk about AV block, you have type one and then you have type two, where type one, the PR interval changes, it gets longer, and type two, the PR interval is fixed. And the reason this is important is type one usually means that the block is in the AV node, and type 2 means it's below the AV node in the His bundle and the bundle branches. So-called infranodal, meaning underneath the AV node, beneath the AV node. And that's much more serious because you can wind up with long periods of asystole because of complete failure of the AV node conduction system and the lack of any kind of reasonable escape rhythm because you have trifascicular conduction system disease in this case. So let's take a closer look at the PR intervals. When we look at the second strip where the P waves are much clearer, it appears that the PR intervals do not change. They seem to be quite fixed. This run of four QRS complexes in a row has a stable PR interval then you drop a beat here, and then the PR interval following the pause looks the same as the PR interval preceding the pause. And that goes along with type two, second degree AV block, doesn't it? Well, one way to verify that this is type two, second degree AV block, is that the pause should be exactly two times the previous R to R interval. And that's just because the P to P is regular and the next P occurs on time and this P occurs on time and with no change in the PR interval, the QRS should be on time. That's the only reason that works. So I'll take a pair of calipers and we'll resize them to equal the R to R interval. As you can see, that equals the P to P interval. And as we move across, we can see the P to P interval is perfectly regular. The next P wave occurs on time. And when we look at the R to R interval, there's two ways you can do it. You can just kind of make a mark right here where the pin lands and then move this across to the next QRS complex. But one other way you can do it is to measure two R to R intervals. So let me just make this a little bigger. And as we move this across, we can see that that R to R interval following the pause is exactly on time. So what we have then is a normal sinus rhythm with a rate of about 80 beats per minute. And here you're conducting one to one. And then what you do is develop two to one block 
But the fact that you have several PR intervals in a row where you can compare the PR and you can see that the PR is fixed, this is indeed consistent with infranodal AV block. You can call it type two second degree AV block, but more correctly, this area right here is known as high grade because it's two to one. Remember, two to one, three to one, four to one is considered to be, quote, high grade. So if you want to label this strip correctly, that's what you'd call it. So it looks like this is a patient who would be a good candidate for a permanent pacemaker, especially when you consider that the heart rate drops to 45. Some people would not have symptoms from this, but then again, the presence of infranodal AV block places the patient at high risk for serious symptoms like syncope. Well, I hope you enjoyed that Chalk Talk, and until next time, this is Dr. Nick with the ECG Academy. Thanks for watching.